go, go. We're going to go live and, uh, and I want you to keep talking. Um, hey okay. there, everybody. It's Corey from The Abundant Artist. And I'm here with Betty Krause, who is an abstract artist and absolute uh, phenomenal uh, Instagram presence. Uh, so I, we were just talking about sort of her philosophy on uh, the art galleries that she's starting to work with. And I wanted to uh, introduce Betty as an abstract artist uh, and, and, and and I want you to keep talking, Betty, about um, you mentioned that you have just started doing some work with some galleries and uh, and you were listening to some little voices. So just tell us, repeat that a little bit and tell us a little <laughs> bit more about what you're doing. OK, sure. So first of all, thank you so much for having me here, Corey. I loved your book, read it many times and um, followed your Facebook page, Instagram page and have learned so much over the years. So thank you. Uh, you. What I was saying about, um, so all these years I have really been focused on selling art on my own, uh, whether it was through Facebook, Instagram, uh, local art fairs, art festivals. And just now I'm kind of listening to wanting to expand a bit and working with a local, um, I wouldn't quite say gallery, but but in a sense they are, but they really work more out of a warehouse and it's a very small warehouse. And I'll be joining them next month for what they call the very, very affordable art fair. And I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a little bit different for me. Uh, I'll have larger pieces there. I tend to sell a lot more of my smaller pieces online. So I'm excited uh -huh. to have this different venue to be able to sell art. Nice. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so appreciative of you, of you being here and I appreciate you uh, be, being willing to take the time to tell your story. So uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Corey Huff. Uh, I'm the founder of The Abundant Artist. Um, it's a company that I've had for nine years where I help artists uh, learn how to sell their art. And uh, it's a lot of fun to uh, work with artists who, you know, they've been followed, they've been a part of our community for a couple of years. Their sales are starting to pick up and starting to see significant results. And then we just have artists like Betty on to talk about what they're doing that's working and um, and what they're excited about. So uh, I, I asked Betty to talk a little bit about what's working in her business. Um, and Betty, you mentioned one of the first things is uh, telling a story. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so. And, and, and sorry, so big shout out to everybody this. that's. Big shout out to everybody that's watching. There's a bunch of people that have already uh, jumped on live on Facebook and uh, Crowdcast. Awesome. Um, hi, Melissa, Jody, Beth, uh, Debbie, Allison. So great to see all of you here. Um, okay, sorry, go ahead, Betty. Yeah, no worries. All right, so to prepare for this, I kind of um, thought about a few different things that really helped me grow my Instagram account. But not only that, but it's not all about followers, but it was about... Uh, reaching out to more people, making more sales, and really be able to work as an artist full time. So one of the things that that I was thinking about as I as I was preparing for this is uh, telling a story. So a lot of times when we post on Instagram or Facebook, we tend to just put our art out there and expect it to speak for itself. And I don't believe that that is always true and it doesn't always work that way. So one thing that I started to do last year or late last year, early this year was to really uh, spend a little bit more time talking about myself or talking about my art, talking about my inspiration. And mm -hmm. it really wasn't until I, I would say earlier this year that I finally got to a point where I came to a style that I've been doing consistently consistently. And really before that, I'd say a lot of people would recognize that it was my work, but I didn't have a true defined style. So I would tell stories, not necessarily about that specific artwork or the inspiration, but a story about something. And I think that really helped a lot. That helps to connect with other folks. And once I got to the point where I started telling the, my own story, which was really understanding a lot better that the artwork that I do, like the example behind me, is landscapes, but more specifically um, having fields of flowers. And that's what really draws me in. Paint, that's what, that's what I really feel inside of me. 
And so once I got to that point, I started telling my story about that and how I connect to that. And I think that has helped a lot of folks connect my work to them. Excellent. I, I really appreciate that. And obviously, you know, I'm a huge story fan being a performer and a storyteller myself, and it's what we teach in our classes. Um, one of the things that I've noticed with you is you seem pretty comfortable talking about yourself and talking about your stories and you've got selfies on uh, Instagram and Facebook with your collectors and fans. Uh, you just seem really approachable. Is this something that comes naturally to you? Oh, wow. I would say that I think it's something that I've really worked at. Uh, growing up, I was an extremely shy child um, to the point where it was very difficult for me to get in front of people. Um, I would turn like 10 shades of red if I had to get up and talk. And so I think I'm doing pretty well today. Um, so I'd say I'd overcome a lot of that. And I think what really helped me is the last 30 years being in customer service management. I've had to get in front of people. I'd had to talk about um, my, my company or my department or the things that we do. So doing presentations and such, I think really helped me get to the point where I am today. And, and, and it also helped me overall in my business as well. Nice. Okay. So, so basically what I hear you saying is uh, just like with everything else, the more you practice being in front of people and talking, the better you'll get at it. Absolutely. Nice. Okay. So you've created this defined style of painting and you would define that style of painting as mixed media or is there more to the definition? You know, it is mixed media because I use a lot of pencils in my work along with acrylic paints. Uh, but I really don't talk about mixed media when I post my work. I really refer to it more as acrylic painting uh, with mark making. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So why do you choose to say acrylic painting with mark making instead of mixed media? I guess because my own view of mixed media, when I first started painting about five years ago, to me, that felt more like mixed media because I was using collage, I was using stamps and stencils and, and a variety of different tools. And I've really narr narrowed that down to be just acrylics and different types of mark making tools. Okay, interesting. Interesting. And so do you, do you, when your collectors, so, so you feel like your own, your own view of your work is that it is acrylic painting and that you don't think your work fits into the, the definition of mixed media, or do you say it that way for your audience? I guess I just, to me, I guess my view of it is that it's more acrylic painting than it is mixed media, okay. but that could be just my, because of my understanding of what I've done so far. Okay, no, that's totally fair. And and the reason I ask is because you, you mentioned uh, to me that understanding your customer was one of these important things that's helped your art career along. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about what you mean by that. Absolutely. So I guess um, earlier this year, I was trying to, a lot of stuff happened this year, so I'm going to refer to that. Uh -huh. But I was, um, I guess I was at the point where I was trying to better understand my audience. And you know, I do a lot of research. I've um, on Instagram and Facebook, I'll drill down and I'll look at who's been following me, who comments. And what I found was I kind of had a two different types of audiences. I had an audience of collectors who do art, but would like some art in their mm -hmm. home. So those that really appreciate art. And then I also, because I'm an artist, I have a lot of people who follow me who are artists. And those artists are also collectors. So I didn't really put those two together until probably about four or five months ago, because I was trying to figure out how do I, how do I cater to that crowd? So I've got these folks that are following me who are artists and are very creative and they want to learn from me, but I'm not at the point where I want to teach. Mm -hmm. So I figured out 
like me, I want, I like having art in my home from other artists that I follow. So I created art on paper, nine by 12 at a hundred dollars, a special price. And it worked because these are creatives that are getting going and they don't have a lot of money to spend and they want a little bit of art from me. And this worked out really well. So I love creating art, small art on paper because that's how I started five years ago. And I also love creating large pieces. So I'm kind of catering to both types of audiences. Nice and interesting. So why do you choose to cater to both audiences rather than just growing your high-end collector base? That's a good question. So I think <laughs> Corey, you've always got the good questions, right? All right. So I love new artists because I'm still fairly a new artist and I, and I totally relate to where they're at because I was there not very long ago and through a lot of practice and research and taking workshops and, and reading good books, I got to where I am today and I like to give back. And so part of my way of giving back is not only by creating art that they can afford and they can enjoy in their home, but also I'm always available to answer questions. So when folks ask me questions, I, I answer them to the best of my ability based on my experience. So I'm happy to always give back. At the same time, you know, if I can continue to grow my audience of uh, folks who love art and are not necessarily artists, then I'll continue in that, um, you know, focusing in that area as well. Nice. Nice. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, okay. So, sure. so let's say that you're talking to an artist who is like, I hate social media. I don't like uh, people looking at me, uh, but I still want to have an art career. What would you say to that artist? Yeah, so so I do meet with local artists and we chat about this all the time. So there's I think there's a few things that you can do, but honestly, if you want to sell your art and you want people to connect to your art, they need to connect to you first. They need to understand who you are and they need to not only like you, but trust you and relate to you. When you skip those steps, I believe that it's harder to have people connect to your art and therefore making it harder to sell your art so that other people can enjoy it in their homes. So to, to kind of step into it slowly, I would suggest things like taking a picture with your artwork but crop your head out. You'll notice that I do that in some of my work. And on some of those days, I didn't do my hair or makeup. So I cropped my head out. But but you can still, you know it's me, okay? You, you can see my body, you, you know it's there. And you kind of get an idea of the proportion of the artwork too. So I would start with something simple like that. Um, show your hand, show your paint, your hand and your paintbrush show the back of you. So get someone to take a picture from the back or set up your camera behind you and take a picture of you working on your art. And we can relate to you. Now we know, hey, there's a person there and there's their artwork and I'm putting those two together. So when people see my artwork, they see my art. And I think because they've seen my face enough times, then in their mind, they know it's me. And, and now they put those two together. So there's a few little things that you can do if you're not ready to put your face out there. And if you're not ready to do uh, the short videos and stories, which I highly recommend. And, you know, getting out there and just finding a way to just be in front of your audience on a regular basis and talk about what you love in addition to your artwork. Yeah. So when you're out, for for example, for me, if I'm out hiking, I'm going to be showing you pictures of hiking. Or if I'm going for a walk, I often take pictures of flowers in the neighborhood because I love flowers. So I share that. So those are other things that you can do that where your face isn't necessarily in there, but they're starting to connect 
your art to what you love to who you are. Yeah, I like it. That's that's so much great advice there. All right. Uh, so so one of the things that artists will often say to me is, well, how often do I have to post on social media? But and and like you're not you're not on there all the time, but you know once a day, maybe several times a day, I see you posting on social media. Um, is that just part of your lifestyle and you enjoy it, or are you pushing yourself to do that? Probably a little bit of both. I do love it, and I've posted recently that um, sometimes I can spend way too much time in there. I go into that black hole, uh -huh. and it takes a while for me to come back out. Uh -huh. But I enjoy every minute in there, right? So I do I do both. Um, when I'm on there, and I tell my husband this, I'm not just on there. I'm working. I'm working. So I am posting, but I'm trying to post smart instead of post constantly. And what I mean by that is I've got a business account on Instagram and on Facebook, and I look at my analytics and I try to figure out when is the best time for me to be posting and take advantage of that. Uh, being on Pacific time with the type of audience I have, most days my best time is anywhere from the nine o'clock to noon time. So you'll find that I'm pretty much posting during that time. On occasion, I might throw something in a little bit later, just so I can catch some folks that don't catch me all the time during that time period. Nice. Stories, I try to post stories on Instagram on a daily basis, uh, whether that's something live or just like I said, flowers or something that I'm working on. Um, folks who are following me don't always see what I post, so I try to take what I post and put it into my stories. So you're going to catch me in one place or another. And then I share those things on Facebook, both on my personal and on my Facebook uh, business page. Yep. So again, posting is important, but don't go crazy. Don't go overboard. Um, I saw one artist say they're starting to unfollow people because they're posting too often. So, you know, there, there's a fine balance in there. I would say um, one to two well-timed posts are, are better than eight to 10 scattered all over the place. Nice. So Christine Ada um, asks if you do any licensing. Do you license your art? I do not. No, I haven't entered that realm yet. Um, I haven't had the opportunity yet. So I haven't done any research in that area. Okay. If somebody approached you and said, I want to license your art, would you be open to it? I would definitely do some research and figure out if that's going to be a good place for me. Cool. Excellent. One of the questions that I have about all of your social media interaction is how does that translate into sales? Does, is, it, is it people messaging you and buying from you directly online or are they showing up at your shows? Um, you know, what, how does that lead? Yeah, so mostly when I post on social media, I haven't had time to put it on my website yet. Mm -hmm. So most people will just send me a message or they'll, or they'll comment um, letting me know that they're interested and I'll message them directly. Uh, people who come to my shows, some of them followed me before the show or after. Uh, so they will come to a show and often with shows, people need to see your art several times before they buy from you, especially larger pieces. So I don't always expect every show to be really high volume, um, but I do find that on almost every show that people saw me at a different show and showed up. So kind of a, a variety of those. And then I have some folks that, that buy from me directly on my website. One of the reasons I don't push people to my website immediately. So really I could create art, post it on my website and just say, go there to buy. Mm -hmm. But what happens when I do that is it takes away that interaction. Mm -hmm. So here they go to my website and they just, they go through this checkout cart where I like to connect with people. So when they message me, we chat back and forth. I get to know them a little bit. I get to understand, you know, what kind of, if they're an artist, where are they in their artist journey? If they're a collector, uh, 
you know, what kind of art they collect or where are they going to put the art. So I love learning a little bit about the collector and not just making this kind of a cold transaction on my website. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a good place. Tanya Lynn on Facebook asks, how do you get followers? Do you worry about getting new followers or do you just like interact and have fun with people and the followers naturally come? You know, when I started out on Instagram a couple of years ago, it's been two and a half years now. I like a lot of new folks, you know, I'm trying to get followers. I want people to see my work. So I think back then I was more concerned about who my, you know, who's following me. As you gain followers, and once you hit that 10,000 magic mark, you, you get to have more access to information on Instagram, uh, the analytics and such, mm -hmm. and other, uh, um, what would I call that? Like in stories, you get to do extra things in there. Right. So once I got to that point, I wasn't so worried anymore. But I, what I concentrated on was I don't care for this like for like. Uh, if you like my artwork, awesome. Follow me. It doesn't mean that I'm going to like yours. And I don't mean that in a bad way at all. It's just we all have different tastes. Yep. So I follow folks who whose artwork I love. And I don't expect them to follow me back. Uh, I expect that, I, I would hope that everybody feels that way. What's a key, if you wanna increase your followers is connect with those people through your messages, your comments, uh, using the right hashtags. So we can use up to 30 hashtags. I take full advantage of that. Um, I use all 30 on pretty much every post. And then um, I'm trying to think of the third thing I wanted to say there about that consistency and posting. So showing up every day, that way people are seeing you show up in their feed on a daily basis. Nice. I hope that answered the question. No, I think, I think that's really good. Uh, I think it's, it's easy that it's easy to focus on who my followers are and how to get more followers at the very beginning. Um, and then as you get further into running your business and, and as your art grows and stuff, you, you start to learn that it it actually works better if you just focus on what is interesting to you and focus on the people that you enjoy interacting with, and and it kind of grows from there. Um, it, and it grows more. It grows. Right. It, the organic growth is better when you do that. Right, right. And I think one thing that I've learned over the years also is, and this is a hard one when you're starting out because you want you're trying to figure out. What do people like? But that's going about it the wrong way. And, and every time I thought that way, I knew I was going the wrong way, but I did it anyway. What it really comes down to is what I love and sharing what I love. And those who connect to that and who love that are going to follow me. But I know that it's really hard to do that in the beginning because you're, you're thinking, what can I create that people love? But it's the wrong way to go about it. And I'm, and I'm telling you this, even though I did it myself. Yep. So it, it, it's just a hard one and you've got to work through that yourself. Yeah. One of the things I've noticed is that you, uh, you have several collaborations with other artists. You've done either done art together or just like, I don't know if you were doing shows together, but how do you, how do these collaborations come about? Uh, I think I've only done a couple of them. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them recently, I tried to do a live uh, Instagram feed with an artist up in Canada, Darlene Watson. Mm -hmm. And um, that one <laughs> didn't go over so well. So okay. we're trying to do two screens. And hers was great. And I was having issues on my side. So um, it, it didn't go well in, in that in that regard. Um, other than that, I can't think of too many others where I know I've talked to some folks about doing things, but um, haven't done too much uh, in terms of collaborating on art um, specifically. Right, okay. Uh, a couple little things as I was sort of digging around uh, again this week on looking at what you're doing and how you're marketing yourself and stuff. I noticed that you have these little animations on some of your, and it says yummy details. 
Yes. Um, these are, they're so cute. If you, in the, where I saw it was on Facebook, there's a little, it looks like a little watermark, but it's actually animated. Um, and it just says yummy detail. Where did you get that from? So, okay. If it's showing up on Facebook, it's because I created it on Instagram in stories that gets saved. And then I, then I share it onto, um, what, what is it called in Facebook? Um, I think it's called stories and Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I do it through messenger. So I go to my messenger and I add my story, which is pretty much the one that I did on Instagram. And then sometimes I'll actually uh, use it as a post on Facebook. Okay. So on Instagram, when you create your story, uh, you're using one of the story tools to add a little animation. That's correct. Yep. I try to take advantage of all the different features that they have. Excellent. Cool, cool. So you, you really are like just exploring all of the tools that Instagram gives you and playing around with all the things that are that are there. I do. And I, I want to do a quick little shout out to uh, Sue B. Zimmerman, who is the Instagram expert. And that's her handle on Instagram. And just like Corey, you've helped me a lot on overall selling my art. I really have taken a lot of um, great advice from uh, the Instagram expert. So yeah. she, she was, teaches a lot of great, great stuff. Yeah, she's awesome. Cool. Well, uh, I think we're we're about wrapped up, but I wanted to give you an opportunity. If you if you had any other words of wisdom for artists who are, you know, maybe just a year or two behind you, what would you what would you say to them? Uh, I would say that. You know, if you are looking to increase your followers, increase your audience, to be true to yourself, just put out there what makes you feel good, the art that you're creating, whether it's uh, completed artwork or work in progress, talk about it. Uh, Connect with folks by by sharing with them what you are feeling about your artwork, uh, whether you're frustrated, whether you're excited, uh, all of that. We're all feeling those things and it's okay to share all of those things so that you can connect more with folks. And really it comes down to connecting um, has been my experience. Excellent. All right, well, again, thank you so much. Uh, Betty for being here and uh, thanks everybody for for watching and listening Uh, just like usual we'll have a transcript of this conversation and an audio and an audio version up on the uh, podcast and the blog uh, later on you know in a couple weeks so thanks so much for taking the time to be with me here today and uh, I hope you have a, a great rest of your day thank you Corey thanks so much bye everybody okay bye